It's time once again for the Real People Multi Games Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're playing Duel of Ages. It's Red Tomato versus Mooney. Um, they are great friends. They were great friends. We'll see if they can handle this competition. It's no ordinary competition. These people, as they are, don't exist outside of their card form. They don't exist outside of the Mega Tournament. So to be able to proceed in the Mega Tournament is to be able to exist. In a way, it's a sort of life and death. And the loser of this will face something of a, a kind of literal death, at least in game terms, because they will be in Hades. They will um, sink from existence in this game and re-emerge in the underworld, which is not a pleasant place. There's a lot of brown there and other kind of darker colors. There isn't the verdant green and blues that you find um, in the Return of the Heroes Overworld. Um, so there's that. And plus there's going to be some inhibitive rules that aren't so nice. So. It's go There's a lot at stake in this game, and it's it's happening fast. It feels like um, I don't know if it's just the way the the draw has turned out or what. Um, but this these new these new um, adventure keys that I got from the web set from the base fisherman seem to be um, making the game go, uh, kind of heat up quickly. Um, perhaps though, you know, there's some characters like Rizik the Red. There's a lot of characters with natural ranged attacks. There are four that I, I can count off the top of my head here. And so that, that could make things, uh, competition heat up quicker as well. Uh, but let's go back into it. We're on turn four. Still don't know how the game's going to end. I mean, what's going to trigger the end condition. Might just go until it seems like time. Right now, I don't know who your who, who your pick is, but I'm thinking Red Tomato's got a pretty sharp advantage. Uh, with Jerry Gillis of all people, seems to be um, going to give him an uh, early advantage. However, Thotus is still in the mix. There's some some good characters on Mooney's side, but I should stop talking now so we can play. I don't remember if I mentioned it last time, but Bodica, the Hand of Vengeance, got this badge that that uh, from his vault there that updated his um, penetration to green so that will make it easier for her to have vengeance. Um, this turn we just finished up with turn four for the most part she um, activated the jump pad. Normally jump pad doesn't see a lot of use but we have Boolean who's about to come into play after our adventure phase and Boolean can use the jump pad with a particular adeptness. So turn four saw a lot of um, just kind of maneuvering. There wasn't. There wasn't any. There weren't any attacks or anything like that. Um, just a lot of maneuvering on the board. So we saw people kind of doing what they would normally do in the first few turns, which is go towards adventures. The iron poles getting close to the colonial labyrinth. Um, Ghana the shifter is going towards the ancient labyrinth. Thump is staying here. Um, there's no one coming in on these domes right now, but if they do, he's he's there to throw rocks at them. He has a natural melee rock attack. Um, Boudica is going this way. Um, we are about to do a couple of adventures, however. Oh, and Thotus went into the white um, team base, and Minx and Jinx went into the black team base. So you could it's probably safe to assume there's some card in the vault that both of them want, unless they're there to be guards. Um, but we have two adventures to do. First we have um, Mr. Gillis here, and that, that we don't need to roll anything, it's just going to happen. So they're going to get the politics card, Red Tomato is. Politics card is very good. If he can hang on to this uh, for another turn, during the free action phase, all his respected characters, and there aren't, I guess it'll just be her, um, she's going to get two cards. So when I was thinking about the combo last time about the politics, I was wrong. Uh, it's not. There's not going to be a combo with Jerry Gillis in these politics. He's not going to be able to get rid of all his cards in order to get more cards using politics. But it will get her two cards, and she can trade those cards off and keep getting two cards. So that could that could still feed them cards. Um, and then the Countess is also going to be trying this this Grace thing, and she's the only honorable member of the team so that will be good for her. So she's gonna do that now. She gets a plus two to the six so she's gotta get an eight or better. Pretty good chances. 
and she amazed it. I don't think that makes a difference. It would make a difference if there's a black marker there, but I can check. It might mean she gets a card or something. And indeed, Countess de Grebski did get a card for amazing that challenge. Um, I wanted to show you this because uh, white team scored on two has scored in two different adventures. This is um, my uh, I, I think I feel I really feel like I upped my whiteboard game here um, because I've uh, added magnets, which should be which should be useful. Um, so here we have all the different uh, areas that the, the two contestants, Red Tomato and Mooney, can score. We have the Ancient Labyrinth, the Colonial Labyrinth, CCL, its initials, Modern Labyrinth, Future Labyrinth, the Village, the Chapel, the High School, and the Chapel we scored in for Red Tomato, the High School, the Council, and the Council was scored in for Red Tomato, the Camp, and the, the most characters. So, right now, Red Tomato is the is winning. If the game were to end immediately, Red Tomato would win, but it's a pretty tenuous um, lead. So it looks like, you know, Mooney has a, is going to be scoring in the, the Colonial and the Ancient Labyrinth pretty soon here, and he'll get some cards with that. So that should um, switch things around. And on the board also, seems like Mooney has the area control game now. His one kind of area where he's weak, I think, is the, the Southlands, which are, which seem to have a, a lot of, um, a lot of things to be had. He doesn't have any presence there, so Red Tomato's just been kind of waltzing in. But if he can seal that off as well, he should have pretty good control of the game. We're sitting on the end of turn five and Red Tomato got impatient. He had three characters in this dome key, all kind of pinned by Rizik with Rizik's flying burst. Uh, he decided to bring them out now and Rizik has a couple opportunity fire opportunities. Uh, he can't shoot all three of them because his op fire for his flame burst is only two. So he's going to shoot at the two easiest targets, Milena Erabato and Dingo Jake. So first he's going to shoot at Milena. He needs a six or better because he's shooting through some woods. And he got a nine, so he missed. Now he's going to shoot at Dingo Jake. Once again, he needs a six or better. And he got a two, that's an amazing hit. So the penetration on this is going to be yellow versus Dingo Jake's red. That's a rather easy penetration. Let me look at my chart, I don't remember what that would be. Boop. Yellow against red, um, 10 or better. So he could get an imprisoned Dingo Jake, which would be quite the coup for Red Tomato. And that's a nine, that's not an imprisonment, but that will, and that won't do any damage either. All right, we're starting out turn six, and it's Mooney's turn. Thotis, uh, during the free action phase, was sitting on the vault. So he took a card, and he is also, this is also a free action, so I believe you can do multiple free actions. They're all free. Um, he's going to use this Cunning Cube. What the Cunning Cube does is anyone on his team who is just as witty or less witty than he is gets a card. Anyone on the other team who is just as witty or more witty also gets a card. So the only person who is just as witty in Red Tomatoes team is Booleen. Booleen will get a card and then every single person on Mooney's turn will get a card. So I'm gonna just draw those. Um, I don't really shuffle the deck because it takes too long between plays. Sometimes I kind of mix it up, but to get a good um, random shuffle would take me some time and I just want to play. So I have to put the camera down because I take it, I take cards from different places to kind of sort of simulate a well shuffled deck. All right, I'm gonna have these cards turned up for just a moment so you can see uh, the results of that cunning cube. Uh, Boleen got this nice horse um, up to speed to eight, which is great because the speed is normally six, eight is faster. Um, Riz of the Red kinda got, uh, pellet rifle's not too useful. It's just a shorter version of his, a shorter range version of his flame burst. So that's not gonna be any help to him at all. Um, Ghana also got a range weapon and got that short bow, that's not, the best one for Ghana. He's going to need to trade that away. If you notice, he cannot shoot a bow for beans. Thump, on the other hand, got a great weapon for him. 
um, except that he is not smart enough to use it. So he is also going to have to trade it away. Three duds right in a row. Now the Iron Pole got this hunting vest. If he can, uh, he's a decent adventurer, not the best, but a decent adventurer. So he could use that to pick up some cards. Um, and then Kid got Fluffy the Cat. You know, Fluffy is a very situational thing. If a creature comes out, it's great to have Fluffy. Otherwise, not so good. Armor is always nice for Ryan, and he is strong enough and smart enough to use it. This Halberd is also going to need to be traded that Thotis got. Um, Thotis doesn't have the muscles and is not a melee character, if you couldn't guess. So there's going to need to be some trading happen, but, you know, uh, things could find their proper place and everyone could be happy. We're ending off turn six. Milena just got out of the way. Um, she is, let's see, I think actually you can, you can shoot through that. So he's already rolled for Dingo Jake though, so I'm going to uh, resolve that first. The reason why I want to... Um, I wanted to film the next roll because the first roll was a three, another great hit. So Mooney has another chance of imprisoning Dingo Jake with um, a hit. So I just wanted to go over everything else that's happened. Um, not a lot. I mean, uh, Iron Pole failed a, a very easy, um, a very easy challenge for him, but he he failed it. Got brought down here though, which is nice. He could he could take the jocks pretty quick, which is maybe good for Mooney to to try and score down here. These these have uh, almost a more immediate benefit than even the, a card. Because if you get a card, it can be really useful, but it can also just be something that you need to trade in order to get its use, or it could just be something that's very conditionally used. Um, Countess. Uh, she got her two bonus cards from Jerry Gillis, promptly traded them off to Minx and Jinx, which is nice. Um, Minx and Jinx headed out after picking the vault clean. Uh, and let's see. That's about it so far. Um, I still got to finish movement, but I needed to do... Oh, yeah, I should finish movement and then do opportunity fire. Uh, let's do the opportunity fire and then finish movement. So, um, Rizik the Red hit... Dingo Jake, now it's penetration, and we're looking at yellow against red again, and that's a 10 or better. Very easy to amaze, and that's an amaze. So Dingo Jake is going to be imprisoned. Too bad, you know, he just got into the swamps too, um, but though technically I guess he probably got shot out oh, here. It would've, wouldn't have made a difference. Now we'll, we'll go ahead and shoot at Elena Arrebato, and that'll be a miss. At least she made it so far. All right, things are looking less one-sided than I maybe thought. Um, Jerry Gillis is still a great boon for Red Tomato, at least in this early game. He's got a lot of cards that are going to help him. He's heading towards this giving space, and giving has a pretty good effect, um, especially early in the game, because it's more likely that this will happen. Oh, that's not the one I was thinking about. Oh, yeah, well, giving um, allows, her, allows him to get more cards in the vault. So there could be... That's something he could combo with. He could keep taking cards out of the vault and replacing more cards every turn, which is what the giving does as a free action. So there is that. If he can seal off giving and then start work in the mercenary camp, which is actually not too far from his team marker. Um, bullying has ended the turn right here. Uh, didn't go his full movement right by this Easter egg though, so you gotta think Countess, who is sitting right on the headquarters, is going to put the jump pad right there, allowing him to jump up to the mercenary track and trigger it. Could very well be what's happening. Here's an interesting uh, situation developing over by the Iron Pole, however. Um, the Iron Pole uh, got warped into three, as we, we talked about. Um, Nerf Puppet moved up and it's kind of blocking off this this little alleyway. There's not a lot he can go through there. Um, he can head out this way though. Boudica is nearby. And I won't tell you what Boudica has, what he got from his Countess Master, but he it is a ranged weapon. So we'll see if the Iron Pole can get past that next time. It's time for me to go for a walk though. It's a really nice day. And I, you know I might be able to come back tonight and do another session.